Everybody, it's Tyler here at Bex Rules, checking in with Legendary 5203 Gremlin. I know everybody's seen this incredible team, one of the first teams to do a Tier 3 hang, and they are absolutely rocking it here at Bex Rules. Just watched their last match. It is so fast and definitely living up to the high stakes game so far. We got so much we're going to be covering in this robot. Of course, we'll be diving more into this Tier 3 climb. A lot of great stuff. Some cool side mechs they have going on here. A lot with zip ties we'll be talking about on this robot. Just overall, extremely well-built machine. Let's dive more into this team, this incredible robot here on Pits and Parts. Connor, we got to start off with this incredible Tier 3 climb that your robot's doing here. Walk me through just, you know, how did you even initially come up with it? And of course, coming in the worlds, did you all make any big iterations to it? And it's just going so fast. So cool to see. Yeah, so... Um, we, as you know, we started with the Tier 3 back in at Haunted. It was a big goal that we wanted to do was to get that Tier 3. And being able to do it and then have a better design at Worlds is something that we're really proud of. So mechanically, the way it works is we have um, these passive hooks right here. So uh, we can press Y real quick. So this is how it goes in the Tier 1. We go into the bar and these stick over the bar. And these are, our Lady Brown has hooks here. That way they can grip at an angle and then it pulls down and these passive hooks go down and then they pop back up underneath the bar. That way we can easily get um, have a secure hold to go up to the next stage. We also have our towers, as you just saw, they were pistonized. Um, so that way we can have more reach once we're on the passive hooks. Um, our towers move up with that. Um, and then we have guide rails back here on the back. Um, there are these flexi rails that allow when we're going from tier one to tier two, it slides against those rails and makes it so it's not hitting any other parts of the robot. And Carson, as we start to look on this machine here, uh, talk to me more about like when you were coming into Vex Worlds, like were there any major changes that you made? Because you know you look at it from Haunted, right? A uh, couple struggles they had initially with that, right? But I think you really, you know, were the pathway finders of like getting this going. So what changed here into Vex Worlds? So we had been working on the robot all the way up until the day before, trying to make the hang as consistent as possible. One of the main things about this hang is the stringing is completely different. We used linear slides on the previous robot, um, so it had a continuous stringing system and actually had four different winch strings in order to pull up and pull down. But this one just controls pull down and then the Lady Brown is able to move the arm up and down. And we actually have string tensioners right here. And so what these do is allow our Lady Brown to move freely during the match. But as soon as the winch pulls enough force on them, uh, they pull off. And we also made some software changes actually here at Worlds. Um, and so one of the main things we did, uh, as you can see, it's in the prime state as Connor put it in. But we realized if we get in the prime state and we end up getting defended, we need to be able to reset the climb. And so we added a button to reset the climb and the Lady Brown. And now he can keep using the Lady Brown functionality as normal if you want to demonstrate that. And then if he resets it again, he can actually get back into the prime state. And then we can show the next macro button as well, Connor, if you want to lift the robot up. So that's the full hang macro. And we use this rotation sensor up here on the top to make sure that we have a consistent position of this arm. And that's also completely different from the last robot because we weren't able to actually tell where the arm was at all. And we were using all time-based code. And so that means that even if it struggles on the way up, it won't stop early. It'll keep going until it uh, finally gets there. What kind of tuning have you had to do in terms of like the field variability uh, here at Worlds? So that's a great question. When we got here, we actually had a problem hanging on the brand new towers. Uh, we noticed they were really grippy um, and not as slick as the ones we had been hanging on. And so underneath these guide rails we have here, we actually stuffed standoffs and spacers. Um, and so that helps back the plexi so that it doesn't squish as much and gives us a way better slide on the way around the corner. And lastly on here, I noticed you got your tanks kind of uh, down below on your robot, great for CG and that sort of thing, but like how many fires are you able to get out of this? Like how, can you mess up like five times or something like that and still climb or how does that work? So our climb uses a lot of air. Uh, there's a ton of weight being pushed up whenever we activate the towers. I think we can misactivate the towers maybe once, but after okay. once we, we couldn't hang again. But you've been very consistent here so far at Vexroll, yes. so of course that, that's been great and working on that. So happy to hear about that. Let's pass over to Dustin, uh, talk more about uh, your 18-incher, how that is all working out. Just walk me through more about it. Yeah, so if you can put the mic down. Yeah. So back here on the uh, intakes, we actually have this zip tie. And so when we start, we put this out there so it actually extends our start out to 18 inches. So so when we when we extend, extend the... Uh, hang, we actually can extend this and we're still going out to our 18 uh, by it and we still have our full 24 this way with that Lady Brown. 
So, and then we also, uh, with the zip tie, we made it to where it was behind the hook. So when we're intaking and we have our Lady Brown with the, with the ring here, it's not sticking out this way. So we're still technically not expanding out that to 18. Yeah, I, I, once again, simple solutions sometimes yeah. are the best solutions. I think that's really cool uh, with that here. Uh, Sebastian, I want to uh, hear about this uh, tongue that you have in front here. Very aptly named, by the <laughs> way, the big uh, pink uh, device sticking out there. But let's talk more about how that's being utilized on your robot. So going off of what you said with simple solutions, this actually is just straight for our Auton. It allows us to get, actually go into the corner of the four rings and actually pull out as we're intaking the bottom ring, pull out the third ring. So we're able to actually just drive forward and actually pick up the third ring and that way we get two plus two rings in Auton. Very cool. When, when was this added on? Was this a Vex Worlds edition for you? Uh, yeah, so as Carson mentioned before, we were working on the robot until Worlds. So this was like a last minute addition. A lot of teams actually have zip ties, but we actually turned or we actually fired and bent the plexi just to get a more consistent type of pull out motion whenever we're pulling the rings and it's peak because um we're actually part of the smorg alliance and so we thought yeah if you can look at the hat the dog actually has a pink tongue so we thought it would be really funny just to aptly make the tongue pink <laughs> very, very thematic i yeah. like that so for sure absolutely on that uh, Jayla, let's talk about on the side of your robot here, you have these uh, zip ties sticking out here. Can you talk more about that functionality for them? Once again, great simple solution I think that's working out for you. Yes, this simple solution. So basically during autonomous, this uh, makes it much more easier to push off the two stacks. So whether if we're on blue side or red side, it just makes it so much easier to get that ring off. And so we can get that ring. And this can actually come off on this side and move to that side to make it a lot easier, whether if we're on the right or left side. For, for your team, when you're looking at, you know, once again, these simple solutions on robots, like, is this something that, you know, did you have a more complex solution initially and then you found something simpler, or is it just uh, the way that your team has always been? So the more complicated solution we had before, a lot of teams have the doinkers, the corner clears, and so we were swiping the ring off with the doinker, yeah. um, but that required a pistonized air, uh, and also it was just way time efficient because we had to line up with the ring and pull it off. No, it totally makes uh, sense on that. Uh, as we start to uh, wrap up in here, Mackenzie, talking about uh, a little bit uh, from your software side, you have an anti-jam uh, setting in here. So just talking about how that all functions and how it comes together. Yeah, so, so one of the things with consistency is just getting those rings. And a lot of times it's kind of unpredictable to be able to actually see how they're going to go in our intake. And so something that we do in our programming is the anti-jam code. And so it basically uses the motor to so like kind of feel the wattage and stuff. To, and so if it feels too much tension, it'll actually outtake and fix that. And then it'll continue to go back to normal. We won't make you necessarily demo that here because we hope your robot doesn't jam at all for things on this. But Gremlin, thank you so much for uh, taking time. It's great to see you all again. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, looking for big things. Hopefully we get to see you in Dome uh, tomorrow as well too as we're filming this. So best of luck. Thanks again. Thank you thank so you. much.